Holy f is this the unholy return of Frisky Dingo on FX? I thought Cartoon Network canceled that shit because people were getting too high to watch it, which has to be some catastrophic bar to reach when you're talking about the Cartoon Network. Sterling Archer, known from Berlin to Bangkok as the world's most dangerous spy. Glad we're starting off with some good old-fashioned torturous position so we can clearly understand who Archer is right out of the gate. And this may be old cliche, but... We have ways of making you talk. Admitting it doesn't excuse it. Even when you're in a bad guy is conducting an audience fake-out simulation, but later turns out to be the actual bad guy anyway situation. What is the point of these simulations? Discount Lucille Bluth would be excellent at TV since. Seriously, though, what good is a torture simulation when you obviously aren't going to torture anyone? Apparently you've gone so far as to paint on exact replicas of Rambo First Blood Scars. So how is this a good use of anyone's time? My code name Was is chosen at random by the ISIS computer. Computer. Picking a name in a cartoon for your secret organization that will one day be known by everyone in the real world as a terrorist organization is classic Archer. Is anyone else bothered by how Archer's cleft in his chin looks to have achieved full bifurcation? I mean, a chin dimple is one thing, but chin cleavage is something completely different. Totally get if the show didn't want to have to get any sponsors for their animated vending machines, but could they at least make it appear as if they have actual product in them? I had to pause this scene for quite a while and do lots of close examination, but I've determined that this ping pong pedal is not only larger than the mark it left, but that it would be just about impossible to also leave a mark for the handle. Look, this is the job, people. I do it for you. Also, this answering machine apparently has no power cords or phone lines. TV show doesn't even know how to answering machine. Also, also, let's see, anything else on this screen? Hmm, well, she's wearing a hat, which I guess is possible, but certainly her makeup wouldn't still be so pristine. Yeah, the makeup thing. Okay, fine, let's move on. But if I find one single dog hair when I get back, I'll rub sand in your dead little eyes. Very good, sir. I also need you to go buy sand. Yes, sir. <laughs> God, this might be one of the best written shows in the history of TV. Take your sin off, you clever bastards. One entire whole week we've been calling you. Considering we're about to find out this is the secret entrance of his agency, how has this even been an issue? Isn't he there quite a bit? Also, is it common for dry cleaner employees to just be standing at the counter holding your shirts when they see you walking in? Highly unprofessional. Really, because I find your sweatiness unprofessional. That's purse burst. The fact that we don't get more about these obvious identical blonde mustache twins working in the same department side by side every day is absolutely a sin. I'm not asking for a spin-off. I'm just asking for a one-off episode of how Gordon and Griffin here moonlight as magician assistants every Thursday night at the local club Blonde Illusions. Is that too much to ask? Remember that Lana is just a cartoon. Remember that Lana is just a cartoon. Remember that Lana is just a cartoon. Remember that- What does this smell like? Like the dysfunctional asshole I broke up with six months ago? Skip. What happened was, um, did you see Brian's song? Same thing pretty much happened. Taking Brian's song in vain. ISIS isn't your own personal travel agency. It doesn't exist just so you can jet off to Whore Island. That's not a real place. Except that it is, and it's airing on CBS All Access every freaking day of the week. Love Island, my ass. I've got your All Access right here, CBS. Oh, good. You caught the, uh, oh, wait, I, I had something for this. The PETA predator. I mean, pedophile was right there, man. The crispy creamer? I'm just saying, you had choices. If you want some food that's supposed to be cream-filled, I offer these delicious donuts. What kind of Mother Dunkin' Donut place just pounds the donuts on top of each other like that? You monsters! The first, at street level, Impenetrable After Six. Fun fact, Impenetrable After Six was the nickname I gave my college girlfriend, which sucks because I worked until six like every day. The second, through an access door on the roof, inexplicably unprotected. Archer would be amazing at TV's- wait a minute, that's almost sort of the point, isn't it? For a zip line to work, it cannot have this amount of slack. Otherwise, you're just asking to pull a girl's trip with your pink and smith just hanging out there in the middle for all to see. What the hell is going on with Archer's tiny hand here? When he turns it over, it goes full Donis Maharl. Also, the show is now telling us the mouse that was in Archer's mind when he was telling the story to Cheryl is actually in the room? Does Archer have dreamscape powers? I think Archer has f***ing dreamscape powers. How did I spend that much money? Good question, considering that an expense account shouldn't allow you to overspend to such an insane degree, and especially since you have do-gooder Cyril watching all the money. These are all... Black. Oh, are they? Uh, I'm with the can of mixed vegetables here, considering the one he's wearing right now has a distinct blue hue to it. That is blue, right? Oh god, I just had flashbacks about arguing about that stupid internet dress, and that alone is worth this sin. I'm the mole, idiot. What? I made up the mole. Yes, but you told Pam, and now everyone is looking for a real mole. Are they? Absolutely no one has been looking for a mole. Lana was back at her place waiting for Cyril to make her a stir-fry. This organization is so bad that there's absolutely no way any agents were looking for a mole. Especially to the point that this dude felt any heat whatsoever. Picture her dead in the gutter. Darling! 
and what your pathetic life will be like without old mommy dearest. Probably less clothes hanger trauma. Sorry, wrong IP. The thought of me dead gives you an erection? No, just half of one, Johnny Bench called. I know we already took a sin off for how funny this show is, but I'm just going to take another sin off for the running Johnny Bench called joke because it is amazing. Do you want ants? Because that's how you get ants. Quite possible. This is the moment TV Sins was born. I'll leave it up to you to decide if that's a sin or not. Standing motionless halfway up the stairs. Who do you think you are, Robin the Frog? You'll get more beautiful every time I see you. Backhanded compliments that refer to previous backhanded compliments. Lord Felchley, may I present Miss Lana Kane? Purposely naming a character Lord Felchley. That name really sucks. Guys, I'm not sure I get this one. What do you mean you won't explain it to me? I think maybe you mean my ex. Archer. How does Monocle Man not remember Archer when he's clearly been hitting on Archer's mom, whose name is also Archer for all of the some time? His memory serves um, not only handsome, but also a secret agent. Finishing other people's sentences. Ian, get out of my closet. I know you're trying to borrow my polka dotted smoking jacket without asking again, and I don't like it. Hey, Excuse come me. on. Don't be like that. Hiding your bomb vest under an easily torn away dress. That's just poor tailoring. Thinking a standard champagne serving dish has the tensile strength to penetrate the human skull. Hey, come on. You know I'd never let anything happen to your bacon. That's because you're a good friend, Archer. Unlike some polka-dotted smoking jacket thieves I know who would eat all your bacon and then tell you none was ever made even though I'm a man with the nose over here. Cannonballing into your mother's beverage. The proper entry technique for maternal cocktail diving aesthetics is the jackknife. Everyone knows that. Well, I think she was just shaken up Stirred by everything. Stirred up, Cyril. The writing on this show is clever enough to make a subtle reverse James Bond joke here and confident enough not to rub our doctor noses in it. I'm getting very distracted by these containers, specifically the one that says poison. It's in the singular and not the plural, so does that mean it's just one poison in a plastic container? Is that even efficient? How do you pour it into a smaller something without spilling it all over the sides? Will it have the same effect the acid had on Jesse's bathtub in that episode of Breaking Bad, or am I confusing acids with poisons? Am I even here? Am I even real? Also, these bins behind Krieger appear to be the same bins we see behind Archer. I'm not saying it's impossible to have multiple duplicate bins, I'm just saying it's wildly inefficient. Also, also, this container over here just says exit. Does it have exit signs in it? Is it a portal that takes you to Narnia? No, seriously, is it a portal that takes you to Narnia? Hello, herpes. Title of the new reality game show I'm pitching to the major network somehow makes it into the episode. So ditch this. Oh, hey, that's... Ow. Unless you can throw around corners, Cheryl was long gone by the time you threw that pin. And if she ducked back around the corner just to get hit by that pin, well, that's on her. I'm so over that lame flex account. When does the HSA start? Lame flex account? Lame flex account? I mean, sure, the employer has more control and the amount doesn't roll over, but there are so many extra qualifications with an HSA that most people just can't. Cyril's off somewhere with Mr. Archer. Calling him Mr. Archer. And did you just cut me off? Did you know that for HSAs, you have to have a high deductible? I'm sorry, Cyril's off what? With whom? I think somewhere was the what there and Mr. Archer was the whom. Cheryl would be the Carol of TV sins. I forgot about the DD-14s. Screw them. Screwing the DD-14s. Like you'd recognize a vegetable that wasn't wrapped in a Monte Cristo sandwich. First of all, you keep that powdered sugar covered deep fried ham and cheese dipped in raspberry jam sandwiches name out of your f***ing mouth. And second, how does it make it easier to recognize a vegetable when it's been wrapped in something else? If I don't know the difference between a disgusting zucchini and a disgusting cucumber, sneaking one into the middle of my delicious Monte Cristo isn't going to help the situation. Think you're fat shaming through, Mallory? It's the least you could do. Elevator door stays open long enough for Lana to have this combo with Archer and Cyril, even though no one is pushing a button to hold it open. And you're cooking dinner later. Yes, I am. Yeah. Marriage. Garate, the Dane Cook of martial arts. Dane Cook? The Tai Chi of outdated stand-up references? Wow, Archer, you were right. A tailored suit hangs so much better. How would you know? You aren't even wearing the jacket and you're just now getting your seams measured. This is like the first step in the process. Do you even want pants? Because this is how you get pants. When would you use an underwear gun? I mean, I feel like the correct question should be when would you not use an underwear gun, but you do you, close-minded Cyril. Not wearing a shirt under your overalls. They're not called over nothings. F decorum, it's the chafing you should really be concerned about. I bet Agent Kane thunks it plenty. You bet she does what? Speaking loudly enough to be heard in the other room through the door you left open while your boss is lying in the same room on the couch. Add in how convenient it was that Lana was just standing there for no particular reason, and with tax, fees, and we'll throw in some centrist, that comes to $21.69. You should be thankful you have Cyril. Well, for about 12 reasons. From my understanding, she'd be thankful for about seven or so of those reasons and have about five reasons to consult her doctor for bruising. 
What's the matter, baby? Afraid you'll catch something. Isn't this the same woman from the opening scene? It's amazing how small the world can be, especially when you're trying to cut down on the animation budget. Ready, sir? Archer's careless and nonchalant, sure, but not usually with his own life, so standing in the line of fire during this exercise seems too dumb even for him. Way to go, baby! You hit it! Considering I heard eight shots and I only see six bullet holes in the pillow, I need to know where those other two bullets went and why everyone seems so impressed by his 75% accuracy. Trinette somehow manages to knock the pin lid off and get poked by the needle with the same quick hit, and that's an impressive feat. Pay her twice her going rate because she's working that plot like a pro. Having two half-covered sections in your kitchen and not using either one for a microwave. And did you say you'd cook, or did I mishear that? I know I misheard you about Jane, because turns out I ran into her. Then why are you just calling Cyril now? Seems like Lana's phone's best feature is its dramatic timing. Oh god, I should never have agreed to this. Which part? Firing live ammo inside? Continuing to carry around a toxic pen in your pocket? Putting Trinette in the trunk? Just want to be clear which thing that your character would probably never agree to that your character for some reason agreed to that you were speaking of. No, low! You want the lowest deductible. Well, then I guess maybe you should have gone with the flex account after all, huh? Because I don't want Sterling to end up with a woman like Lana Kane? My god, a black... That's right. ...ops field agent? Rogue Nationist. Yeah, that's Rogue Nationist, is what I was always going to say. This is like O. Henry and Alanis Morissette had a baby and named it this exact situation. I think it would make more sense for them to name the baby. I have no f***ing clue what irony is, but I'm still going to keep the millions I made off the word Henry. Because a man like you, Cyril, doesn't deserve a woman like Lana. Culturally biased relationship equivalencies. We'll find out here shortly that this is Lana shooting at Archer and Cyril. Lana is putting her own life and the life of her co-workers at risk to make a point about deception, I guess. Honestly, how am I supposed to take any of this show seriously anymore? I don't care if you have 50 dead hookers in the trunk. Unconditional love. Well, you shot a machine gun at me. Around you. These three bullet holes would like to offer a semantic counterpoint. When we first started going out, I may have injected a tracking device into your body. Making Lana the insecure and more crazy one in this relationship is kind of interesting, but also 100% unbelievable. Oh my god, Trinette. Yeah, Trinette, you sh Making me wish I was watching Reservation Dogs instead of this right now. You know, I bet there's a lesson to be learned from all this. Yeah, probably something about how characters early on in exaggerated comedies feel like shadows of over-the-top and often unlikable stereotypes that, when looked back upon, will feel false and inconsistent to what they might become. Probably something like that. And if it happens again, I'll put a lock on it so no one can enjoy it. The fact that I'm more likely to believe Mallory's talking about Archer's d instead of anything work-based is either a testament to how f***ed up this show is or how f up my brain is thanks to this job. And my job, I mean Rick and Morty. Can we talk about these chairs? There is zero back support unless you're reclined, and what sort of help is that while working at a desk? This uniform that has had the button stitched on opposite sides of the jumper opening makes it no longer a uniform. Terrorist organizations who label their presumably illegal boxes of weapons, weapons. Talk to these chicks, all right? Tell them how we're really ISIS agents. I could send chicks, but that's pretty on brand for Archer the person. However, why is one of these chicks Cheryl? Is it to save on drawing another character again? Although I guess that's pretty on brand for Archer the show, so two sins it is. This backward name tag. Unless, of course, this man's name really is you, Brad. Or he forgot his name so often that he has to be able to see it in the mirror. What? You're black-ish. Ish? Archer survives Lana in this scene. Hey, tell this broad what's up with ISIS. Okay, okay, Archer gets another agent killed, I get it. But is it his fault? Shouldn't everyone know that the only way to survive working with him is to block his number immediately? Star Hat Man has extra storage bags on his belt, probably because he's a star rank and deserves more, but this Star Hat Man has no extra storage. And to make it more confusing, the non-star spy also has storage on his belt. How am I supposed to understand military ranking if there's no consistency in extra storage bags on belts? Join me in welcoming our new ISIS agent... Stern. Conway Stern. Cliché. Saying your last name first and then repeating it by saying your full name. Cliché. Also, I find it hard to believe that Conway snuck into the room for this casual wall lean introduction without anyone noticing. Yeah, I am kind of lovely. You know what else would be lovely? Exploiting the sheer talent it would take to perfectly sew up the apparent tear in the fabric of your shirt in the few minutes it's been since the morning meeting. Wait, you don't think you're getting the office? Well, I am the human resources director. But Pam, come on. Yep, that's what qualifies as the B-plot in this episode. These two arguing over office space. And no, not the movie. That would have been awesome.
Your entire job could be done by a, a bulletin board. Pam doesn't respond to this by kicking Cyril in the figuses and suggesting he lodge his complaint with the bulletin board. This isn't even on. Probably for the best, because even if it were on, the screen's designed aimed towards your sickles and not your face. And this is the locker room. So did Mallory just stand here while Stern was getting changed and then continue her tour speech? I mean, this totally checks out with what we know about Mallory, but why would Stern agree to go along with this? Oh, I'm queer. From the guy whose tiny gun came with a matching purse. Hey. Homophobic stereotyping aside, if Archer is naked, where is he keeping the purse? Also homophobic stereotyping. So you just watch your step, Mr. Damn it. Hey, right there, what you should have gone with was Sammy Gavis Jr. I heard it through the grapevine that there's an even more obvious alternative ready to get it on. Sexual healing. None of these clocks are labeled with the country, so they're all pretty useless. Almost as useless as me constantly sending animation shortcuts. And here, use this. Oh, wow, what is this? Labeled, Cyril. It is labeled. Tell Conway that his secret Santa wants to come early. Festive puns. What can I say? They just don't slay me like they used to. This newsletter was doing so well until this then, which is obviously supposed to be a the in the context of this sentence. Parish being used instead of parish over here, and the fact that the bottom half is entirely Laura Mipsum. But a non-circumcised Jewish guy, that's... Not weird to you? So weird, in fact, that there's no possible way this should actually convince Lana that Conrad could be a double agent. I mean, if he is a double agent, that means he chose a cover story that was demonstrably not true and managed to have it exposed on his first damn day by being naked. He's gonna end up being just that dumb, isn't he? Now whom can I thank for these shrimp? Me, the secret Jew Santa. This works. That was amazing. It was? The state of his desk and the space around would seem to indicate their boom boom zoom time was pretty exciting. But her hair and makeup are exactly the same as before. Was the sexy fun time from the jawline down? Don't go starting rumors about Conway boning your mother. Oh my god. Stop making me listen to vomit. Stop it. Why are these haphazardly drawn jelly beans just hanging out atop a square block? You couldn't have haphazardly drawn them a bowl? I'm assuming this word is supposed to be displacement and not displacement. Unless, of course, this document is trying to bring back an obsolete verb that fell out of use in the late 1800s. That looks nothing like me. Archer, come on. The proper thing to react to here is the mention of discreet scratching in the behavioral tick section. How do you not immediately ask to see the footage of that? Also, are they tracking his live heart rate? How the hell are they doing that? You were there in the condo together. Yeah, last weekend. Oh my yeah. God. Stop making me listen to vomit. Stop it. Get on the plane, buckle in, sit there. Wait, why is he in disguise already? Surely he only needs to be in disguise for the meeting, right? Doesn't it look a little bit suspicious if Schmeck's Cuban contact got spotted with Conrad before they've intercepted Schmeck? Oh, hey, Pam. What are you doing here in disguise? No one sees these two chuckle f**ks gun flexing on a balcony. None of the people in the background are here during the shootout in a few seconds. They don't scream and run away. They don't grab a gun to participate. I guess if the animators didn't care to show what happened to them, I shouldn't care either, but that's not how this works. Now grab the plans before it's too late. It's already too late. <laughs> yes, it is. The f did this guy come from? And how did Super Spy Archer not see him coming? And that is a Cuban hit squad. A Cuban hit squad that apparently wasn't triggered in action by the sudden death of Schmeck or the fact that they already knew this wasn't the real Major Gomez. I set this whole thing up. The Chinese pay five times as much for the Whisper Drive. Villains positing your entire plan instead of killing Archer and, you know, not expositing your whole plan. No, Archer, I didn't have sex with your mom. Oh, thank God. Oh, oh and that? That would have been a tough image to get out of my head. But the image can still be there even if the event didn't happen, right? Like, I can still make you think of something gross even if the gross thing never happened. Like, for instance, <laughs> don't worry, I'm not, I'm not going to deliberately make you think of something gross. But your parents did probably have sex at least once. And those oh, were his last words <laughs> right before God. he bled to death on the rug. We can only hope. We can only hope. No, you squeeze lemon juice over it, then smush the saran wrap right down on top. That way it doesn't go brown. Teaching me a great guacamole hack that will now forever be associated with this stupid show. Come on. No one dislikes only three things and no one enjoys Swedish cuisine. Ferlot. Jager jagledsen for det. Jagskoyabara. Also being vector sexually biased. The stirring of this drink with his finger is just one of the many replacements this show has employed just to avoid giving Archer an apple so we know he's an asshole. Mallory doesn't have anything in her hand, so how is this PowerPoint presentation presentationing? Also, Democratic. What in the absolute f is being taped so frequently that it warrants this tape dispenser taking up the entire left side of this desk? 
Und on second barrel, I come out all John Vui. You're gonna need to be more specific. That could be anything from doing unnecessary flips to doing unnecessary face surgery. Oh no, we won't give our baby chocolate. Refusing to give a baby the deliciousness that is chocolate. Oh, wait, it really is bad for them? Well, then the creation of a biological system that can't digest the deliciousness that is chocolate right after birth. Oh, you were talking about my gun. Cupping either of Lana's guns without her explicit consent. This is good to know. Making knowing things feel inappropriate. Oh, and hands like the Truckosaurus. Truckosaurus doesn't have hands, but he's got some big old pinchers. He'll pinch you all right, but unfortunately, he'll never be able to use a hammer, and there is something sad about that. What is that smell? Gravlocks and failure. Pairing any meal with failure. Who on God's green earth dressed you? Somehow Archer's state of dress wasn't the first thing Mama Dearest noticed a full five seconds ago when she answered the door. Woodhouse is already up to tying Archer's tie for him, but in the previous shot, Archer's shirt was also not buttoned all the way up. So can Woodhouse button a button without actually buttoning a button? Because I don't think he can. Take his mind off Lana's huge Johnny Benchian fingers. We'll come up with the baseballing, playering, referencings, Mallory. Putting your cigarette out in what looks like a pile of potatoes. When we all know beans and onions are much more effective at extinguishing a flame. What is that, a calcium supplement? Neglecting the more important question of whether or not it's carbonate or citrate. And if you don't think the distinction is important, you should ask yourself if you want gas. Because that's how you get gas. So what? I call him fist to robotic. But it doesn't just fist. <laughs> Well, damn it. Pam's ability to take something that's funny on its own and then send it into orbit is going to knock a sin off the counter, isn't it? Except for the negrets. Being old-timey offensive is still offensive. F***ing hipsters. Destiny? No, she's not passable. With that Adam's apple, she looks like she swallowed a Rubik's Cube. Archer says something offensive because he has no filter and no real understanding of right or wrong, and the audience is supposed to find it funny just because it's a terrible thing to say. Cliche. When I served in the King's African Rifles, the local Zambezi tribesman called human flesh long pig. Never much cared for it. Being able to stomach eating people, but still letting Archer treat you like dirt. Woodhouse. F***ing bite his ass. Help with what, sir? No, I was addressing you as help. Addressing the help as help. Do you want a chocolate pie that includes an ingredient of feces? Because this is how you get a chocolate pie that includes an ingredient of feces. I wonder ow, if Dr. Ow, ow, Panty Model knows ow. how many pounds of pressure it takes to snap a human collarbone. She probably uses the metric system. Cyril would be the number one agent at TV Sins. I find your lack of faith disturbing. I find your mannish hands disturbing. I find it unbelievable that Lana walks around quoting Star Wars, but here we are. And yes, I'm not calling it A New Hope or Star Wars Episode 4. It's f***ing Star Wars and you f***ing know it. I find your mannish hands disturbing. I think they're kind of sexy. They're fingers, Pam, not kielbasa. Thinking chirophilia and cytophilia can occupy the same space and time. Yes, Major. I am in position and ready to eliminate the target. First off, the only position you're in is the one of sitting down in the bathroom variety. And second, why are you taking any kind of chance on someone outside the bathroom hearing this conversation? Shouldn't you have laid out all of these plans before getting to Mallory's home? Odin will find it much harder to bribe a dead man for the UN contract. And I will find it much more enjoyable to work with the woman who runs ISIS. Ha ha, fun joke, Yakov. But if you know that Mallory is trying to get the UN contract, how does killing Utni prevent Odin from getting the UN contract serve your goal of becoming her inside man? Sure, it creates all the fun multiple assassins hijinks that ensue, but this story could use a little clarity on how all its spycraft nonsense actually works. Why don't you just pour it on everybody's? Why are you just pouring it on anybody's? What is this, amateur hour? At least make a reduction, a gravy, or an au jus. I kept it on the nightstand to wake Nanny whenever Sterling wet the bed. Wait, whose bed? It was always, don't ask, don't tell. Why would Cheryl even think to ask this question? Mallory's statement was in no way confusing in regards to this area. They were blanks, uh, weren't they? Only if the back of his skull picked that exact moment to explode outwards. What? I'm confused too, Mallory, because Torvald was shot in the chest and fell back before he could have been shot in his skull. Also, Mallory, with all her time in the spy game, doesn't recognize what bullets hitting a body looks like. I think you have some serious and unresolved issues with your father. Yeah? Yeah. And maybe that is why I date a wrinkled old man like you! These two need to go to couples counseling so they can unpack this relationship and stop asking us to. Now, Sterling, drop your gun between yeah, the bodies no. and- no. Have you ever seen CSI? This is already, like, Clue Town. Episode promises us a visit to Clue Town, but episode never delivers on said visit to Clue Town. Well, this tort's a winner, Mallory. What was that name again? Claude Kaka. Damn it, Cyril. 
Clacaca is much closer to a brownie or chocolate lava cake than it is to a tort. Also, who got all the f***ing blood out of the carpet? Screaming crazy and shooting blanks. Can we get off my finger? I think he's already being regaled. Why must you micromanage everything? He's a fully integrated, multi-fetish artificial being. I also promised you a baby. How's that working out for you? Lana, release him! I don't know. I think there's like a racial component. Don't worry, this is a normal smell. Well, that depends on your first dose. Just strange to hear it out loud. Think of it as a team building exercise. Odin can suck it! You out of your big fat Russian skull?! The Greek wedding extended universe is going into some paths I just can't follow it down. Also, judging by how often my washer breaks down, I can't imagine a worse option to use is the exit slash entrance to your secret spy elevator. They're electrical machines purposely built to fill with water and vibrate themselves into oblivion and that's what you want between you and escape from a metal tomb? Nikolai, how could you do this? Oh, this KGB surveillance team. Not they... how, how, you ass. Why, how? Getting frustrated with someone who uses English as a secondary language after your semantically specific pronoun gaming. How? For record of activities in Krakow. Considering where this story goes, it seems like a true waste that they blow past activities in Krakow without even a whiff of anyone's entendre being duplicated. All Hispanics look roguish. Mallory says something offensive because she has no filter and no real understanding of right and wrong, and the audience is supposed to find it funny just because it's a terrible thing to say. Cliché. Okay, let's see here. We'll take a quick screen grab, zoom in a bit. Now we just run it through Google Translate. Man, I love technology. It just makes everything so much toad chicken love candy. And so, here are the keys and the deed to my condo in South Beach. And Mallory's worried about the government shutting down ISIS after whatever is being leaked is leaked. Naturally, her solution is to immediately donate her Miami apartment to a Cuban secret agent along with a lump sum. Sure, nothing suspicious about that at all. I said I could eat the absolute pants off some shrimp. Pretentious restaurants that make you de-pants your own shrimp and probably charge you extra for the privilege. Also, searching for shrimp pants yielded more relevant results than I think is good for society. Also, also, wait, they're actually having lunch together? This is the man that's blackmailing you out of your condo a ton of cash and putting your entire livelihood at risk, and you're happily going on a luncheon date with him? I don't suppose he's up. Wait a second, was Archer serving a non-sparkling fermented beverage in a champagne flute? I knew he was a heathen, but I didn't think he'd stoop this low. And from the looks of it, not to mention the lemur. Mentioning the lemur in the room by saying you won't mention the lemur in the room. What else? We got any lube? Like at this point, even olive oil would- <sighs> Yes, I researched this. No, it isn't a good idea. Yes, I regret my choices. No, I wouldn't change a thing. Jesus God, Sterling schoolgirls! So those are just costumes. And I suppose that makes it better? But doesn't it? Sterling would be excellent at barely keeping himself out of jail sins. Now, I know you're familiar with the honeypot. Seducing and blackmailing a hot female enemy agent. Describing things everyone participating in the conversation already knows so that the passive participants you shouldn't know are watching can feel included too. Sir, that stolen lemur bit one of your prostitutes right in the face. Wait, earlier Archer said, Woodhouse, I told my guests you'd pack their lunch. Who packs a lunch for people you're paying for sexual shenanigans? I don't hire a plumber and then send them away with a PB&J. Wait, am I supposed to? Am I the asshole here? Also, expecting me to believe that the sound of a sex worker being bitten in the face by an irate primate wouldn't have been heard throughout the entire apartment and most of the city. She says she can't go to hospital because she's, quote, tripping balls. Well, then clear a path for her, Woodhouse. Jeez, what an inconsiderate time to be organizing your marble collection anyway. Bang. Ew, kill. Bang. Shock. Shut up. Oh my god, bang. Why would you specify bang for one person and kill for another? How do you differentiate between shooting someone and just wishing them dead? Jesus, Krieger, you're still taping bum fights? No, now I'm into something darker. Nocturnal bum fights? We have some more tubs of chaos here, but the one that really burns my toast is assorted screws. Assorted? Are you telling me that within this giant tub is just a mess of different sized screws? That's insanity. Nothing damages your cuticles more than rifling through who misspelled aspirin. Every movie, TV show, and Cirque du Soleil production to take place in Miami feels the need to show a butt in one of their establishing shots. And none of them dare to explain why the tip of America's love spear has chosen our split ends as its mascot. I'm just putting it out there. We'll just put it back in. Archer isn't here in the scene to save phrasing. 
not wearing protective skating gear. Is this some sort of viral marketing? Oh, I'm fairly certain if you sign up to whatever Archer is selling, you'll be exposed to something viral. You are entirely too gay. <laughs> Thinking it's even possible for someone to be too happy. Expecting me to believe that this is a world where spy agencies like Odin are fine with having their secret agents on the front cover of whatever this magazine is about. Also, this is the most unrealistic couple ever. What couple buys the same magazine twice? You buy two different magazines, and then you can switch with your partner once you're done. Honestly, this is the weirdest thing in the whole episode. Like, somebody murdering me? It's so... Intimate. Making me even more afraid of intimacy. I want to dress you up like a little gnome and just have you live in my garden. Teasing us with the possibility of Woodhouse having a better life. Episode never explains who this guy is, or why he's following Ramon, Mallory, and or Archer everywhere with nothing more than the addition or removal of glasses as a disguise. Well, I was very fond of a boy at school once, Reggie Thistleton, but he died in Skip. Where were you all night? Way the Christ out in the Everglades burying some Dominican guy's rooster. Fun. What? Oh, you mean literally. Archer returns equipped with a shovel, a dirty shirt, and a seemingly accidental homosexual euphemism. Sadly, said euphemism comes at the expense of everything we know about Archer. Is he really the type of person to spend an entire night helping a stranger bury their dead chicken? This is the most selfless thing we've ever seen Archer do. He should have poached that chicken. Literally and figuratively. What the f***? is with this tape dispenser is it secretly a weapon does it shoot spikes is it a camouflage garrot wire is the adhesive on the tape some kind of fast acting neurotoxin why is tape get me some video of hot man on man action by tonight on don't bother coming home thinking the temperature of the men in your blackmail video matters Wait a minute, how do you know Ramon's playing Highlight right now? Um, he's Latino. So it's either that or Domino's. No, that explains, rather badly by the way, how you know what he's doing. Not the fact that he's doing it right now or where he's doing it. Don't you ever give up? Not when it comes to somebody refusing to have sex with me. You know, consensually or whatever. Yeah, I'm afraid it's that pesky or whatever part that just makes it really hard to ever want Archer to succeed. And if we don't want him to succeed, why is so much of every episode spent on him succeeding? Debate. Apparently, you can only divide 271 by 1 in the number itself, meaning it has exactly two factors. And since it has two factors, 271 is a prime number. Ah, oh, damn it, I involuntarily mathed again. You are playing a very dangerous game. Sterling Archer of Isis. Consciously talking to your unconscious victim just so the viewer knows that you know what the viewer already knows. You know? Also, shock! He figured out that Archer is Mallory's son and working for Isis. We won't find out how Ramon figures this out, but we honestly don't need to. Isis sucks so bad that it's incredulous that undercover missions aren't off the table entirely. Ha! You found Krieger's cameras? Thinking these big-ass cameras could be hidden in the first place. So are you two even really gay? As big old tangerines, yes. Confusing me about the size and sexual orientation of a piece of produce. Then how can you work for Castro? You know his stance on homosexuality. Be equally baffling is why Castro hired these two in the first place if he's so against the existence of homosexuals. Let's outsource it to some cracked up Haitians. That's what I said. Outsourcing murder. Or just the concept of sourcing in general as it applies to people. Really anything that allows someone to refer to a person by a three letter acronym. Now, if I've lost you on that one, don't look it up. Just hold on to your innocence. And if you see what's on these discs, well, if you weren't gay, you will be. <laughs> well, what is it? A sex tape of mother? Assuming that viewing a maternal sex tape would make you gay. Now, I'm not saying it isn't possibly going to do some serious emotional damage, but chucking that into the same bucket as homosexuality might be a step too far, Archer. And that's in the same episode where we have Cheryl getting aroused by the thought of a drooling fireman strangling her to death. I bet you're not even a real interior decorator. Well, he's not licensed or anything. Making me so curious that I had to dive into the murky waters of bureaucratic red tape just so I could find out that no U.S. state requires a license to work as an interior decorator. Sure, there are exceptions, but I assure you they aren't interesting enough for the amount of time I spent on that. Where's Charles and Rudy? Hmm, I think they must have escaped. However implausible that may seem. That does seem implausible. You can acknowledge an implausibility as much as you like, but bullshit is still bullshit. So I get to go to the French Riviera on the ISIS time to do what? Wanting to go to the French Riviera. I mean, you might run into French people. And a surprising amount of the British. Don't underestimate, Scorpio. What Clint Eastwood told the studio when they freaked out about the budget for his first Dirty Harry movie somehow makes its way into this episode. Saltile tile is terrible for a kitchen because it's so porous. Well, this just sounds like you didn't use a proper sealer on your tiles, mister. Well, they just taped something already. This book is all Laura Mipsum, and Archer doesn't even once comment on all the instances of the word coom. 
Either this pineal pregnancy test is a joke, or I've been very wrong about how these things work for a very long time. Either way, this sentence is the lack of information I received from my high school health class. Like, which end are you supposed to blow into? This was uh, supposed to be coconut shrimp. F*** all the way off with coconut shrimp. There is no way anyone likes it. You're mixing the terrible taste of coconut with the deliciousness of shrimp, and why would you f***ing do that, you monster? I really want it. Well, too bad. Because guess what? So if Lana was getting this assignment the whole time, why is Mallory wasting all this time telling Archer about the mission? Even for Mallory, this seems out of character. I can't imagine she'd want to waste the time it would take to humiliate Archer in this way. However, it does work out conveniently for Archer that he knows exactly where to go and what to do when Lana needs rescuing, so here's one sin for the convenience. And another five for making this mother-son talk pita on for all the some time. Why are you going? I'm going to, um... A conference? Oh, well, isn't that convenient? Archer, I already seen the convenience of this situation. And yes, technically your convenience is a different convenience than my convenience. So that's really f***ing convenient. I moved in with my last girlfriend after four weeks. What are you, a lesbian? The sin is obviously using stereotypes instead of surround sound types. But in all my research into U-Hauling, I couldn't find a single reason why other companies were passed up. We could have had penskiing, ridering, or even budgeting. But even though Cyril may be clingy... Oh, saran wrap could take a lesson. You used to complain... Wait, did Mallory and Lana just stop talking about Cyril mid-conversation in the limo and then continue from where they left off once they got on the plane? Those are several minutes of silence. I'd be super curious to watch. I wonder if he's like that because I used to spank him with a wooden spoon. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that, but it might explain the ping pong paddle. You never need to explain a ping pong paddle, but sometimes you do need to explain the balls. It better be, Mr. Sex Tape. Title of the documentary about my sex tape? Scuff that luggage and I'll cut your hamstrings for you. Half of these boxes appear to be Mallory's kit, yet the episode doesn't contain a drum solo. I'm sorry, are you addressing me? Because your authority is not recognized in Fort Kickass. Uh, Krieger would be the kick assiest to TV sins. Text her again. I am if you'd shut up. Do I think Cyril can be extremely dumb? Yes. Do I think Cyril's dumb enough to let Archer's obvious backhanded sabotage attempts be successful? I mean, most days probably. But today I'm not buying it for some reason. I'm a complicated sinner. Which hopefully explains my shock at finding myself aboard the Chum Guzzler. I get that your Chum is mostly water, but guzzling is entirely unnecessary. In the flavor department, a little goes a long way. Worst case scenario, her cover got blown and Scorpio's f***ing her senseless before he chops her battered corpse into fish food. Archer says something shockingly awful because he has no filter and no real understanding of right or wrong, and the audience is supposed to find it funny just because it's a terrible thing to say. Cliché. What is in this drink? Well, sorry, is ice from cooler. Somehow it got butter all over it. The answer is that everything in France is inexplicably slathered in butter. <gasps> oh dear God. Mallory thinks Lana is in immediate danger, and her solution is to call Archer, who's hours away back in the U.S. to come in on a rescue mission. And we're supposed to not question any of this, because the defining trait of this company is them all being bad at their jobs. Because it would be nice to know what kind of danger I'm facing here. And it would be nice to know why Archer passed up an opportunity to say, Danger zone. I bet Mr. Archer already went all double O ninja on Scorpio's ass. <laughs> karate sound. I was appropriately ridiculed by the neighborhood kids for mouthing sound effects on the basketball court. So, even though we're kindred spirits, I must send Krieger because there isn't even any karate happening right now. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. That's right. Give it to me. Oh. The celebration I'm legally no longer allowed to do when entering the gelateria somehow makes its way into the episode. I thought I gave you a fake number. Episode expects us to believe that Archer can get cell phone service underwater, and I do not believe you, episode. I've had good results with ether. Having good results with ether. I am just now again reshaving my balls again. That sentence sounds like he shaved his balls at least six or eight times in close succession, and I feel sorry for them. What was that all about? Um... Since Lana has no way of knowing that Mallory has been watching her until now, how would she know that this was the moment that made Mallory think she was in trouble? I mean, just because she's right doesn't make it any less bullshit that she knew. No excuses, eh? My balls are smooth. Even without hair on them, your balls should not be smooth. Right? Bartleby the Scrivener? Anybody? Not a big Melville crowd here, huh? One thing Scorpio and I have in common. Well, that and super smooth balls. That got a little dark. I mean, yeah, chocolate fondue threesome, hearty har, but what I really want to know is how Archer kept the fake mustache on through all of this, because that shit's impressive. This chocolate-covered strawberry was not there before the commercial, adding to the overall number of chocolate-covered questions we have. Every single noun and verb in that sentence 
totally arouses me. Logophilia is never going to have a more mainstream appeal with Krieger as our, I mean your, spokesperson. Every ISIS agent has a company-issued life insurance policy and, uh... And what? You're my beneficiary! Now both groups are talking about life insurance and... How'd you get life insurance, Lana? Don't they know you're in the danger zone? Too late, Archer. Too f***ing late. I forgot to spend the balance in my goddamn flex account! Episode has time for this. Despite his multiple holes, Archer will continue to function normally. Kill them, you fools! Lana and Archer then have a lengthy back and forth, and these guys forget how to shoot. Or something. Lana? Asshole? They survive this because the episode is running out of time, so they have to just be better than the bad guys at not exploding. Remember Cheryl is just a cartoon. Remember Cheryl is just a cartoon. Remember Cheryl- You can trust me. You know. Probably. What? Probably? Womp womp. Cheryl gives a call back to something that Lana said earlier in the episode, and Cheryl was not around to hear it. But I mean, I'm feeling a little generous today, so I probably won't send the episode for this one little thing. Womp womp. All aboard for safety and adventure. Narrator doesn't pause for the very obvious ellipsis. Why, it's actually flame retardant. I believe the modern term is explosively disabled. Sterling, it's totally safe. You're, well, except for the bomb threat. <laughs> you, not Captain Steubing. You took my sin. It was my sin and you took it. I suppose we could bump Mrs. Beekman. Bump me? I'm not going. If these two can share a cabin. But you just said... Actually, we are fully booked. So how would Lana and Archer sharing a cabin even be possible if there are zero cabins available? Mallory, come on, let me stay with you and we'll do the whole Oprah Gale thing. No. Even in 2010, I'm pretty sure the Oprah Gale thing was past its pop culturally relevant expiration date. Lana! Danger zone. Am I taking a sin off for one of the funniest running gags ever on a TV show? I think I will, because I like living in the danger zone. I went through these sexy silhouettes one by one, because I have a job to do here. They all look good, except what's up with this one? What is protruding from her waist? Is she injured? Did she try and use a tiny hula hoop? Did she come down with a sudden case of Yzma boobs? There's almost a full car length between the cars parked in this row, and that's just inefficient use of your lot space if you ask me. The director said, let's have Archer eating a pear. It's close enough to an apple to make him look like even more of an asshole. God damn it! We're moving! What vessel of any kind with passengers on board doesn't make an announcement that they are about to take off? Zero. But please, be discreet. Hey, good advice. Which maybe I'll just sort of fold in with my 12 years of experience as a covert operative. Did those 12 years teach you to display your guns by your <clears throat> guns at all time while well, being discreet? Because I don't think it did. What the hell is going on with North America on this map? Florida appears to be flaccidly sidling up to Mexico like some sort of limp penis insula. And then Michigan is just a northern blob of land completely ruining the ability of locals to geolocate by pointing at their hand. On second thought, I like this map. Let's keep it. Either A, I tell Lana what happened on that scratchy green office rug, or two, you get inside me. Did you ever have a teacher who wanted you to pass so bad they gave you multiple choice questions with answers so obvious you couldn't pick wrong if you tried? Yeah, just curious. And are you just gonna sit there? Yeah, until she tags me in. What? <laughs> I'm kidding. My back's all messed up. Aha, but you somehow climbed to the top of this console with a bad back and your pamp. I'm guessing a bad back has never prevented you from tagging in before. My vulva is smoother than a veal cutlet. Remember Lana's just a cartoon? Remember Lana's just a cartoon? Baccarat! What? Mr. Sing wins! Wait, what? You can't have a showdown with only one hand. Plus, Baccarat means zero, not a winning nine. Show doesn't know how to Baccarat correctly. But then, again, neither do I really, so that makes two cents, right? Holy sh! did I just see Cheryl's veal cutlet? That's what love is, Lana. It's forgivey. If that's true, my 16th favorite foreigner song is all of a sudden very anticlimactic. Half naked tits bouncing around like you're at a rodeo. I am clearly attending the wrong rodeos. And yet you lecture me. There's no way that Lana had time to even hit the speed dial number in the time it took her to grab the phone from her... Maybe she had it in... I guess it could have been... What were we talking about again? Aha! Finally, Archer makes the mistake of showing us the timer here at 11.11, but 17 seconds later, when they show it again, it reads 10.54. Wait, that adds up. Fine, but exactly 1 minute and 51 seconds later, when they show it again, it says 9.03. Okay, yeah, still right. But a minute and 39 seconds later, it's still exactly correct. And 37 seconds later, when they cut the cord and it speeds up, it's still accurate to the exact second. What the hell, Archer? It wasn't enough that this final diffusing of the bomb is one of the funniest, most clever, and well-written comedy pieces in the history of television. You also have to have a precisely accurate bomb countdown? This asshole show is trying to put us out of a job, and that may be the biggest sin of them all. But also, based on the sound of the
the countdown beeps, you can tell when the counter speeds up that the counter is counting down exactly four times as fast. And when we see the timer 78 seconds later, exactly 312 seconds have clicked off the clock. Meaning, even when they had a reasonable excuse for not giving a flying airship's f about the timer accuracy, they still got it exactly correct. Sometimes you just have to know when you're beat. You win, Archer. You win. Well, then who did it? I did! How did Lana and Archer not see this guy until now? Also, why would Captain Lammers even bother calling ISIS to investigate the bomb threat if he was going to actually put a bomb on board? Yes, he didn't make the bomb threat, but he didn't have to call someone to investigate. Captain Lammers! Nice read, Velma. <laughs> Oh my god, this show is the best. Who the hell wants a two-day blimp ride to London? Apparently everybody. You were fully booked, remember? Celia! So Captain Lammers isn't going to shoot Lana and Archer before jumping off the blimp? They could still disarm the bomb and ruin his plan. Now there should be a dash followed by two letters. Okay. Okay, so now I want you to cut. This little exchange will lead to a hilarious misunderstanding, since Ray thinks the two letters are O and K. But Archer clearly wasn't looking at the serial number when he said that. And he's clearly not been following the NATO phonetic alphabet. And Ray just accepts this OK as the letters he needs without a second thought. So wait, which one do I cut? The teeny bit blue one. But he's watching them on video, so they should be able to show Ray the wires and he can identify which one to cut. What were the last two letters? B, Ray? as in Gosh. butthole. What do we do here? And M, as in Mansi. What? <clears throat> Lana, you can be pissed off all you want, but you were there when Archer said Mansi, and you didn't say a goddamn word. Starting with the fact we just bombed Ireland. I'm um, pretty sure that's Wales. Geography snobs. I know ISIS is on a security test run here, but can we talk about how any reasonable human being thought this security was even close to acceptable enough to begin with? You have multiple openings in your roof that apparently have no alarms on them and can be opened from the outside. You do know you can have skylights that aren't also entry points, right? Second, you decide to set up a laser grid, but then make them a single plane of six foot by six foot squares? Why even have them in the first place? What if Catherine Zeta-Jones stops in? That's barely going to be any fun to watch. Third, those lasers are so high off the ground, Jabba the Hutt could crawl under them. And if you can't stop a hut, you're basically begging for your stuff to be stolen. Do you know how hard it is to lay on your stomach, prop up on your elbows, then rotate your left wrist to fully face the person beside you to flip them off in full frontal fashion? Well, I do. Ah, uh, why the hell is your phone on? Movie theaters. If we show San Marino the flaws in their palace security, they've agreed to hire us as security consultants. Considering this is a mission briefing they almost certainly had before the mission started, I can only assume that Mallory accidentally called Archer and Lana instead of the audience as intended. Damn it! What the hell are they even doing on these wires? They shot a wire to attach to both sides so they could hover travel instead of crawl? I swear this show thinks it just exists to crack jokes and mock spy entertainment instead of providing reasonable and detailed spycraft practices based in reality and authenticity. How is Mallory holding this phone to her ear? It's clearly nowhere near her shoulder. I suppose she has spy earrings that magnetize to the phone somehow, making her busy phone life easier. What am I saying? Where's her headset? Because you learned nothing from it. I learned that flammable and inflammable mean the same thing. The English language. Oh my god, we've been spotted and they're shooting at us. Oh my, oh god. <laughs> Bet she's freaking out right now. Not understanding your mother even 1%. Discount Jägermeister. And yes, we would have sent actual Jägermeister for being product placement. Welcome to TV Sins. Don't step on the ants. And let's just knock off the giggling. Sure, but you're going to have to give me a reason to start first. All of San Marino could fit in the South Bronx. Judging a country by its size. Does the South Bronx have the oldest known constitution still in use today? Kugel says I don't think so, Mallory. Zero, are you cheating on me? No, just trying to get my muffin back. So, yes then? You got a slugger in the diaphragm with a forearm shiver. Weird safe sex euphemisms. See, time lost is muffin lost, <laughs> along with my appetite. For food, that is. Cheryl has deviant horniness in an attempt to get us to king shamer. Cliché. As for hiring Odin. Odin? Having a video conferencing camera that comes with the built-in automatic zoom out for dramatic reveal setting. Or a convenient zoom out for dramatic reveal human operator with a working copy of the script. You said it was the nose of a Caesar. Eh. Trexler puts his hand on the face of the presumably important Captain Region of San Marino, and none of his off-camera security appear to have an issue with this. Even from a basic hygiene standpoint. 
Because I've swallowed just about as much as I can take from you! Hey! Phrasing! Sure, its first time was a quickie in episode 4, but this is where the King of Entendre retorts really thrust itself into pop culture in a deep way. A sin-off for this mammoth running gag being the runniest and gaggiest we've ever experienced. Wait, you want us to break back into the palace, which now has the insane amount of security we recommended? Lana would be excellent at TV sins, and yet she still chooses to work for ISIS. Letting your crackers touch the cesspool that's the community workplace eating table. You might as well just mainline streptococcus at this point. Guess who has breast cancer? <laughs> just one of like two dozen equally appalling videos on your website. But who was filming it? The camera started on this woman, turned to Pam and Cheryl, and then turned back to the lady. Who's the accomplice? Draw me someone else to be angry at, damn it. She keeps seducing me. Blaming your choices on your libido. My point is, urges do not equal action, Cyril. Own your f***ing choices. Literally. What's my father ever done that's so great? Never... Then you can take her home to meet your dick dad. And then I shove his hawk face right into her big brown boobs and scream, Look at these babies, old man! Cyril is not my son in this scene. The computer processing power dedicated to this completely unnecessary rotating globe. What are you doing back there? I don't know. What are you, just hitting random keys? What? Expecting Archer or any person glued to a glass of scotch to have any clue what these keys do. Is Lana new here? Ah, oh, damn it! Wait, where is the Hobbit guy? The thing I've been constantly asking while waiting for Peter Jackson to direct another narrative feature film somehow makes it into this episode. Testing your high-tech sleep masks on the wrong part of your crash test dummy. Storing your acid above your beer. Unless, of course, you enjoy the potential for corrosive drippage into your fermented beverages. I remember what Miss Archer did to the cleaning ladies! Okay... Wait, are we saying Miss Archer actually killed three employees? And everyone knows about it. And everyone is still fine working here? And everyone knows about it? And everyone is still fine working here? And they know about it? And they're fine work- The show refuses to give us an episode featuring each of these employees. If this was The Simpsons, every one of these people would be a key part of their world with their own character quirks and lives. Justice for background extras! This was all I could find. I'm thinking goggles, yes. Shovels. Um, actually, Archer, only this one is a shovel. This is a spade. TV Sins, doing the good Lord's work since 2018. What do we want? Unfair! When do we want it? Change! It wasn't until the strike chant writers of America got to the picket line that they realized the terrible bind they had put themselves in. Nobody knows why we're striking! Well, we can't say, hey, right upstairs is a top secret intelligence agency. Yes, you can! Ciro clearly demonstrating that he has no idea how leveraging works. Not wanting to animate a side view of your character so desperately that you just have four of them break the fourth wall and stare directly into the audience's soul. So let's go out the back. I am absolutely shocked that the back door was an option number one, especially for Archer. <laughs> number one. With salary Lana. and performance incentives Lana. and all the bonuses. Bonuses? This is apparently brand new information to the person who is head of accounting for ISIS. Massive headwind Cyril here hasn't applied any pressure or gauze or anything against this gaping gash, and his face should be drowning in blood. At the very least, Cheryl should have knitted him a forehead tampon by now. How many are there? About a jillion. Using non-existent hyperbolic numbers in tactical situations. Also, at what point does the cost of protecting something outweigh the value of the thing itself? Asking for my virginity. Friends. My, my friends virgin- uh, f Do we take the drones for granted? Michael Bay's ambulance. No, no, no. That is utterly unacceptable. It's just a cost of living adjustment. It's strong arm robbery. Wow, these are reasonable concessions and Mallory isn't budging one bit. Can you imagine if this happened in the real world? People asking for a fair wage and so-called industry leaders on huge salaries with massive bonuses shooting them down. What a shitty world that would be. Go ahead, crank up the heat. I'm as naked as the day I was born. Go! Acting like every last one of you wouldn't give everything just to be the olive in her martini glass. I've said too much. And that's the game, Lana. Survival. Just watch Deliverance again, huh? Learning all the wrong lessons from Deliverance. I mean, is Burt Reynolds not the man in that? Ronnie Cox Erasure. You know, he did all his own stunts. I know! Shh. He did his own stunts! It's really hard to believe I should root for Lana over Archer when she does stupid sh like yell at the top of her lungs while on a stealth mission. Standing straight up and above your cover while jillions of machine guns fire at you. 
He loves Tempo. I just needs you to upload their GPS coordinates into his HUD. Do you mean HUD? Why are you saying the letters, you acronym squandering word butcher? At that point, you might as well just say heads up display. It literally only costs you a single extra syllable. Your use of abbreviations is completely F-U-B-A-R. That number is pegged to the consumer price index. Invading the privacy of the CPI's sex life. And yes, I know that's stretching it. Is what the CPI said after the number finished pe- This gin soaked dress, specifically. This show really loves being in France. Because of the general concupiscence surrounding Archer, I have to specify that I'm talking about the country and not a person. We have a butcher, a baker, and a latte maker, and that's just not how you rub-a-dub-dub. -dub. This is also not sexual. Because this is what was there, Lana! Managing to bury two salient pronouns in your snappy seven-word mid-conversation cold open. Archer murders two police officers in cold blood and laughs it off. I continue to get the impression that this series isn't entirely embedded in reality, morality, or another ality that finishes that thought nicely. Did you want to finish shutting your big fat negative wordsy mouth? Oh, Archer, my friend, I have barely begun. Archer. Which cannot be taught, by the way, Archer. like a poet. Archer. Mind for Archer. Lana sees this truck coming for quite some time, but thinks that calmly repeating Archer will work just as well as saying, hey, there's a speeding truck coming right at us. This drawing of a flaccid Is he trying to turn that thing on? <sighs> Look at this. O-N. Nothing. If Cheryl's really this stupid, I'd love to know how she manages to put these earrings in every day without setting fire to, well, everything. Hey, we have this whole huge history together, oh, Dylan? We don't have this whole huge history. Thinking it's the size of your history that counts. Using a mirror to reflect the laser beam back into the laser? This scene suggests that the villain stripped Barry and Lana, but decided to leave them with a the mirror. Or Barry or Lana somehow knew they'd need a mirror and hid one in their person. Sorry it took so long. And then I'm accidentally inside you. Not a problem. Burying your lead. I wonder who packed his stuff, because we all know Archer's never put a condom in a box. Key card? Oh, here! God! Either Archer has a very dexterous penis, or the animators weren't interested in animating the departure of this card from his person in any way that makes any kind of sense. It's probably the dexterous penis thing. God damn it! When do we get a bulletproof door? Archer will walk off this shattered kneecap as if his gun was loaded with pixie kisses and warm hugs. I'm gonna pain you dearly, Woodhouse, when I peel all your skin off with a flensing knife. How does Archer expect to get hold of a flensing knife on such short notice? A butter knife would be much easier to find, and trust me, it'd be much more satisfying. Why? Well, because... This dull, you twit, it'll hurt more. I wonder if any of the characters in the show think it's weird that their portraits look more realistic than they do. Odin won't hire him after the stunt he pulled in Berlin. Teasing us with a flashback to a mission that looks like it would have made a better episode than the one we're watching. These poorly drawn breasts. I just don't see why you need this. Not seeing why we need this. You're a natural. Bet it's all that lacrosse at boarding school, huh? Interesting, considering he's swinging a polo mallet, which has about as much in common with lacrosse as hockey. And to be clear, I'm not acknowledging either of them as a real sport that actually exists. Because no concrete evidence can be found. The internet is just littered with fake Wikipedia pages. It's clearly a conspiracy. This poor woman who's been waiting on standby since halfway through episode three. And how dare you steal my son away from me? If only you had something to hold things in place so they couldn't get away from you. Like the tape on your desk. Why is it there if you're never going to use it? Why? I said don't come in here. You are Grandpa, what I say? He said do not come in. Someone here should be saying do not come in, but it is an archer. Considering the previous atrocities this show has happily shown us, I have to know what finally crossed the line and required blurring. Do you know how f***ed up something must be for Archer to blur it? Then go check your telex. I don't know what's weirder, that there are only 32 intelligence agencies in the world, that most of these acronyms are actually real, or that this fax machine has a send to all intelligence agencies in the world button. If you love it, put a ring on it. If you love it enough to put a ring on it, you should probably stop calling it it. So you take him to the basement, you put one in his ear. This kind of vague instruction is how you end up with a piercing you don't want. To this day, I'll never understand why that guy was instructed to put one in my love sausage. Ruined a package of perfectly good bratwurst. This insanely huge lobby with approximately 17,000 square feet of wasted space. This building clearly has more than 13 floors, but the indicators on the ground floor apparently don't give a shit. No! Baby, I am putting you in the corner. Making me realize that even with all the horizontal mambo that goes on in this show, there's actually little to no dirty dancing. Alright, you yellow sons of bitches! Mallory says something offensive because she's blackout drunk, has no filter, and no real understanding of right or wrong, and the audience is supposed to find it funny just because it's a terrible thing to say. Cliché. So just sit there and do this! 
Ooh. Ooh, what? We can't, Miss Archer. It's too late. Except it isn't, because in about four minutes, Lana will save the day and it will take her all three and a half seconds to work out how to undo this. Making us have to guess whether or not this yo-yo and this wiring diagram are part of some very specific fetish. Archer! Oh, come on. Lana, why the hell are you... Whoa, whoa, whoa. L Lana, no! This execution happens off screen to confirm that it is not real. Also, how did Archer know to play along? Lana manages to perfectly communicate and execute this ruse in seconds, and somehow Archer doesn't f*** it up by having sex with something. Barry, does this make up for framboise? It does, other Barry. It sure does. The one-line pitch for my off-Broadway adaptation of Flashpoint somehow makes its way into the episode. I can send a telex from Odin to make the burn notice from your mother what? look like an Odin black flag. Wait, how is that going to solve anything? Why would Odin send a burn notice out for an opposing agent and then immediately admit to it? Why wouldn't the world just believe that Isis had set this whole thing up to make Odin look bad? Also, isn't Archer screwed regardless? Hasn't his code name, real name, and picture been distributed to the world's agencies? Also, also, the also that loved me. What's stopping Odin from sending another telex saying that the original burn notice was legit and an ISIS agent snuck into their building, attacked Barry, doinked the head of HR, and then sent the telex to make them look bad? I think the moral here is fax machines were never a good idea. These poorly drawn people fornicating in a public library while the cast of Hamilton watches on and sings encouraging affirmations to them. Wait, you don't see that? Well, I have to get Cyril, who's on... Framboise. Fun moment of catching Cyril with his pants down, but he thought he was in the lobby, so there's no reason for the elevator to even stop on the grenade storage floor. That chick was like the Pele of anal. Saying this without knowing for a fact that Pele wasn't the Pele of anal. If I had shot you in the face, I'd be living here, getting curtsied at by servants. Yeah. Trust us, Lana, we're equally confused as to why you didn't do it. Two roads diverged in a wood, and you chose Archer, and that has made all this inference. I don't recall ever seeing a welcome mat at your back door. If you're showing up at someone's back door, then you've reached a level of casual familiarity that would not necessitate such a formal greeting. Come on in, grab a beverage, make yourself at home. Wait. But wait, would that chew you up, me and you, a little revenge anal? Lana seems unimpressed by this suggestion, but to be fair to Archer, he didn't specify who would be on the receiving end of this alternate ending. You wearing a seatbelt? Uh, no. Why, but... ah! Archer survives this, but please, don't let our sitting the outcome discourage the attempt. Not putting a bookmark in your book before going to sleep? Do you want to knock the book over in the middle of the night and have to try to find your place for memory? Why would you do that to yourself? Put a gun under the pillow like a normal paranoid CEO of a spy company. The book is on a f***ing pillow already. Why do you have a cleaver? Asking someone who has unexpectedly entered your room at night why they have a cleaver, instead of throwing everything within your general area at them and then proceeding to attack them like a spider monkey. And here we see the same animation for the external shot of the ISIS headquarters. I know, I've seen it before. But since this is the final episode of the first season and they couldn't manage to do something different, even a balloon in the sky or something, I'm going for the last sin of the season. One time, two actual princesses. Two at the same time? Yeah, they were sisters. Sploosh. Anyone thinking having a threesome with two sisters is a thing to be proud of. What is this? You mean, besides incredibly awkward? It's only incredibly awkward because there are no security protocols for the screen popping open and starting a live feed. You'd think a breach like this would be an important thing to address in a spy organization, but then how would the show make any of its mediocre sex jokes? No, I'll take steroids! I... Which happen to be available to me in this little plastic cup, which I keep in my pocket for maximum shock. You know, the whole monster hands thing? Starting to border on me. Yeah, it's almost as if ISIS should have written up a regulation putting the kibosh on verbal abuse in the office before worrying about the office fraternization issues. Episode doesn't show us what's in the Hope's Dreams container, and I do not have much hope that I will be able to dream about anything else tonight. Episode expects us to believe that Mallory would take the time to be all motherly and wipe the blood off Archer's chin, and I do not believe you, Episode. I'm beginning to become very annoyed at the repetition of the character pulls exactly what they're referencing out of thin air cliche. There's no reason Mallory has a random ass certificate from Archer's fake dad's ROTC 21 gun salute whatever whatever at the ready. Her hands are needed for other things. Alcohol and guns come to mind. The size of this coffee cup compared to the sole of her shoe is making me uncomfortable. I assume those are my only choices. <clears throat> oh my, <clears throat> who else? I understand Archer wants to know who his real father is, but this still falls under asking your mother for a list of her sexual partners, and there has to be a sin in there somewhere. Thanks to technology, I can tell you with confidence that this chunk of text here has nothing to do with the microchip. Without reading the entire thing, here are my favorite excerpts. But neither spouse will lead the basketball gate. Or, I would like to pay in advance and do not ask for a reasonable price. Together with their companions, the mountains will give birth to feathers and great thrust, and a ridiculous mouse will be born. Also, this is Latin, not Russian. 
And if I am Archer's father... I'm trying to focus on this ridiculous plan he's going on about, but I can't get over how much unused f***ing space is in this office. Reading. Also, kids. Oh, you're lucky his father's not here. Threatening the guy with the gun pointed at you while you have your baby. You are just so determined not to be cool about this. Expecting your ex-girlfriend to be cool with the fact that you cheated on her multiple times while dating her. Naming your tavern, Tavern. Yeah, sploosh. This is the third sploosh in this short episode, and we're not even to the climax yet. What part of you pay me $600 do you not get? The part where we don't have sex? You get to say we did. He gets to say he had sex with you, even if it didn't happen anytime he wants. This guy would be paying for her corroboration with his wild sex story, and that specific detail is entirely skipped in the negotiations. 5% discount for cash. I thought it was 10. Oh, 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 I can't wet my beak. I mean, I think you can until Friday. Calling your meat packing company, meat packing. These ratchet straps, specifically. I will let him or her Give me a handy. Come on, let's share the milk of human kindness. Archer thinking milk will come out of his d after getting a handy. Dude, swear to God, she gave me a Jane Hathaway right on my chest. Don't Google Jane Hathaway. Don't Google Jane Hathaway. Uh... Oh, well, that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I've always been scared to Google things like that, like Cleveland Steamer. Well, maybe that won't be so bad either. Oh, my eyes, my eyes. This kitten still hasn't been adopted, and the entirety of this organization is compromised of horrible people. How can you not take waffles home? How? Being the kind of person that pushes the elevator button for the floor they want to go to more than once. Look, Lana, since Cyril cheated on you, I can forgive the sextrafuge you're trying to pull off today in his office, but I can't get on board with you putting your boots on his desk without his explicit consent. Cyril? Snap. Snap. Girl, please. Making light of someone's potential mental breakdown and the probability that they will try to do harm to themselves or others. Someone's in here! Announcing someone's in here when there are three other stalls unoccupied. Not to mention however many urinals this bathroom has. I'm gonna pretend you're Alex Karras. That's George Papadopoulos to you, Lana. We will also accept Mongo. Show fails to explain how Sterling made his way back to Mallory's house wearing nothing but a bloody lab coat and carrying a meat cleaver and no one stopped him or called the police? And no, simply saying, well, it's New York City, does not make it sin-proof. Dressed like some sort of cattle rapist. Knowing what a cattle rapist dress is like. Also, leaving the loaf of bread on the counter unbagged. Do you want stale bread? Because this is how you get stale bread. And ants. Just gonna go ahead and sit myself for not being able to resist the obvious here's Johnny reference in the outtakes later. All six right in the ten ring. Archer survived all six in the ten ring. License to kill expired at four o'clock this morning, young man. Mr. Powers, Ms. Shagwag, welcome to my holiday volcano. My code name was is... chosen at random by the ISIS computer. Random? It was your dog's name. We named the dog Indiana. Stop! Stop! Mother, did you see that? Mother, oh God, mother, blood, blood. Is that Archer? God damn it, Archer! Hey. Go away. May I suggest? Messily eating an orange while I photograph it. Archer. Good day, sir. Hey, wait, what about your... I, I said good day. <laughs> In the summertime when the weather is hot, you can step right up and get a sandwich that's not. Can we please have one conversation that's not about my rack, Michael? Johnny Bench called. If that's a veiled criticism about me, I won't hear it and I won't respond to it. What's up, buddy? I'm not your buddy, friend. What's this? Well, uh, see, uh, here's the thing. That's it. I'm getting out of here. Cyril. Watch yourself. Cyril, check this out. Really? Sort of looks like a Smurf penis. It's not a baby. Afraid you'll catch something. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you hear that? What do you think it is? Immigrants. We, we get, get the, the job, job done. done. Oh, and uh, Archer. How do you like their map? <laughs> You're anti-Native American. Would you put on some clothes, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Is this bothering you? Shrimp soup, shrimp stew, shrimp salad, shrimp and potatoes. They touch penises. Just so you know, it's not that common. It doesn't happen to every guy, and it is a big deal. Do I make you horny, baby? Do I make you randy? Yeah, so, uh... Okay. Conway? My shirt uh, was ruined. That will require a tetanus shot. 
For six years running, the contract has gone to Odin. I am Odin! The first, we make a big phony attempt to kill Torvald Otni. Okay, and the second? Well, phase three is profit. What is that smell? I could have been at a barbecue! You haven't even tried the fish ball. Saggy bottom balls is what she called me. When I served in the King's African Rifles, the local Zambezi tribesmen called human flesh long pig. Tastes like paint. I find your lack of faith disturbing. I sense a distressing lack of enthusiasm on your parts. Your only condition is that you are a stupid, crazy girl. You're a shitty old man with a tiny shriveled penis. But what of the financial arrangement? Lines up straight like that, right? To the right of it and to the left of it are pockets, right? In those pockets are money. Look in either one of them, pay the bill. What else? We got any lube? For the record, those are hand towels. The big towels are on the top shelf. What is the melody you've committed? To fight the system, don't let me back in the jail. I'll kill you. Wait, did Cyril play this stupid game? Love games? I want to dress you up like a little gnome and just have you live in my garden. Know your limits, Master Wayne. The citric acid from the limes actually cooks the fish. Try it. Mmm. Kind of sort of an oaky afterbirth. So I get to go to the French Riviera on the ISIS dime to do what? I just want to say one word to you. Plastics. But it's the Pope's fault she won't let me wear a condom. This is one crazy Pope. Yeah, I want it. You really, really, really... No, you go have a fun assassination. You go. I'll have fun watching you. Oh. So I can rub myself into your crop? Drinking champagne in a bikini? Is there any other way? Now, how's my disguise? Sandy, that is your worst disguise yet. Every single noun and verb in that sentence totally arouses me. Not sexual, let me finish. Also not sexual. But isn't hydrogen flammable? Joey, you ever hang around the gymnasium? Some broad gets on there with a staticky sweater and boom! All the humanity! Oh, Captain, my Captain. Sit down, Mr. Anderson. We are on a break! We were on a break! Well, you know how I got this car. So I had a wife, beautiful, like you. Captain Lammers! Nice read, Velma. And I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling kids. It's Niner 34, Tango X-Ray Sierra. But did I catch a Niner in there? Were you calling from a walkie-talkie? About 15 freaking beers, all that shootsy and holy sh**. Did I honk down a bunch of absinthe? I'm the Green Fairy. Because I hallucinated you had an engagement room. You didn't see anything. Cyril, are you cheating on me? We were on a break! You've ruined us. I've ruined us? You got a lot of nerve, honey. The millions you pissed away on clothing and jewelry and the spa treatments. Yes, to keep you interested in the only thing you ever appreciated. My body. Can I help it? You got a fantastic body? Then you can take her home to meet your dick dad. And then I shove his hawk face right into her big brown boobs and scream, Now can I please have my motorboat? Listen to your hearts! Because deep down you know they're exploiting us. The line must be drawn here, this far, no farther. And we don't talk to management. Or ham-fisted whores. What? Dad, there's like whores here and stuff. Sweetheart, how many times have I told you, don't say and stuff. Just say, Dad, there are whores here. Sweet Jesus, the goggles! The goggles do nothing. What, 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 oh my God. Are you aiming for these people? No. <laughs> Maybe that's mine. And if you ever get tired of playing JV ball, oh. you know where to find us. Yeah, yeah. Business card, boot cocky. So I don't play by the rules, mother. I'm a pretty damn good web designer. Time to face destiny. Time to face gravity. So will you please just help me up? I'm gonna enjoy watching you fall. Good, cause I, I, like I said, I bet I just reek. Reek, that's a good name for you. Because there is lamp everywhere. I love lamp. Sterling? Hello, mother. One time, two actual princesses. Two at the same time? Two days, same time, same station. 37. 37. Um, 37. Get on the desk. Really? I want you to put my head in the freezer mm, while you do me from behind. I'm not grilling you a cheese. I want my grilled cheese pronto. Here's Johnny. 